Trust in your ways. I know your hands are right there holding on. Hey, help me walk out in faith into the wind and waves and be my strength when all my strength is gone. I need you to carry on. Trust in your ways. I know your hands are right there holding on. Oh, help me walk out in faith into the wind and waves. And be my strength when all my strength is gone. Oh, and be my strength when all my strength is gone. I need you.
Well, good morning, Woodstock Church and Woodstock community. It is uh, good to imagine you this morning. And so we are glad that we get to worship with you together. And for many of you in your living rooms, maybe some of you are listening in your cars. Uh, last week we had a couple listening in the semi as they were driving down the road. Uh, there were those that were listening in hog barns and in milk parlors and all over the place. And so we just want to welcome you this morning as we get to worship together uh, in spirit and in truth. And so we just pray this morning, and, and just a few moments ago, the team that's gathered behind me, we just prayed that the Spirit of God would meet you right where you are this morning. Guess what? This situation, this circumstance has not caught God off guard in any way, shape, or form. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly where I am. And in He's in both places at the same time. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I hope that you are ready to worship this morning. I hope that you know that we are gathered together as many, maybe in different locations, worship Worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And what we know about that is that when we worship together in spirit and in truth, it changes the atmosphere. Hallelujah. And my prayer this morning is that the atmosphere over southwest Minnesota, over uh, uh, southeast South Dakota, over northwest Iowa would be changed this morning because we are worshiping together. And so I hope that you have uh, put your worship PJs on as you're worshiping today and that you are ready to encounter the presence of God. Hallelujah. Well, I have a few announcements I want to share with you this morning. We want to first uh, welcome our friends across the street at New Life. We miss you guys. We are uh, looking forward to the day where we get to see your smiling faces again, but just please know that this family is praying for you right now. We are excited about the healing that God is releasing on your lives, and so we just want to welcome those from New Life Treatment Center today. We also uh, want to just give a special shout out uh, this morning to Maddie Vintal. It is her 10th birthday on the day, and so Maddie, we love you. Happy, happy birthday, and I pray that even though it, it might look a little different on your 10th birthday, let me tell you, you will never forget today, and so we are glad that we get to celebrate uh, your birthday. Hey, we want to just uh, remind you of all the different uh, ways in which we can stay in touch during this time. One, uh, we have a, a texting platform uh, that we are sending out uh, messages and prayer, prayer concerns and then a daily just little thought and devotional. And so if you are not on that texting list, you could just write it on the Facebook page uh, that you'd like to be added. You could uh, uh, look for my contact information on the website and you can text me privately. But we would love to include you in that if you are not already and so that you can stay in touch on what's happening. Also, we want to stay connected and how we can pray for one another. And Facebook is a great way to do that, but also on our website on several different places. Uh, our homepage, it says, how can we be praying for you? If you click on that icon, it's going to take you to a private form where you can type out a private prayer message, and uh, you can determine whether you want the entire church to be praying or if it's just the elders and myself. Uh, but we want to be able to know how we can meet your needs in this time right now. And so praise God for technology that we're able to do that. And so, and, and I just want to continue to direct you to our website, woodstockarc.com. Um, we posted a lot of things on our homepage to make it a little easier, but on there, there's an opportunity for you to be able to give. There's an opportunity for our Wednesday night Bible study, uh, how to get connected on Zoom. We had a great turnout this last Wednesday, but we want to encourage you even more. Uh, for those that didn't attend, jump in with us. Mark chapter 8 this week, we want you to read it, we want you to study it, what's God speaking to you through it, and then we want to talk talk about it together face to face. And I know that there were a, a number of folks that had just said, hey, listen, um, we don't have uh, the technology to be able to see or, or to be able to log on to that. This week via the text platform, we will put a phone number in which you can actually call in and you can be a part of that Zoom chat. We just won't be able to see you. So you can dial in from a cell phone or a landline. And so uh, we want to stay connected with you as we as a church continue to grow together. 
together. Just because we're not meeting a, in a building together doesn't mean that we can't stay connected nor uh, encounter the call that God has specifically uh, given us. Well, there are a few needs that I want to make you aware of or just to remind you of. We are uh, partnering uh, with the local school district and helping provide meals for families that are in need as well as we are providing uh, for families that are struggling in our community right now. This past week, we fed right at 20 families with groceries and to-go meals, and, uh, and we are going to continue doing that this week. And so uh, please be watching uh, Facebook and your text messaging as we ask for help and for donations. Thank you to all that donated uh, beef this week. We were, had a freezer donated yesterday, and we're going to just continue. We expect that need to grow. And if you know somebody that's in need of essential groceries, they're in uh, need of anything, please let us know so that we can try to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ uh, during this time. A couple more announcements for you this morning. And yes, I get a little lengthy on the announcements, but this is really the only chance I get to talk with you. And so you got to bear with me because this extrovert sits in his office quiet a lot of the week. And that's murderous. So uh, just letting, that's not true. I, I really talk a lot to myself, but neither here nor there. Hey, just a reminder, the couples course, the last night is tonight. And uh, we will be on Facebook Live at 4 o'clock. Please join us there. For those couples that have done the lip sync battle, we are so proud of you. Uh, oh my goodness, it has been fun to be at home and to laugh. And, uh, and so for the other like 20 couples that have not participated yet, uh, the, the, the challenge is on. And uh, just let me give this to you as a forewarning. Um, we will call you out publicly uh, if you do not participate. So Monica and Carlin, get on it, all right? And so uh, we expect great things, and uh, it has been fun to stay connected and to laugh that way. For the kids uh, that, that uh, got on and, and shared that memory verse, there's a special gift coming your way. And hey, kiddos, Wednesday night, just a reminder, there will be another uh, place on Facebook in order where there'll be a lesson. And then uh, the children's team is putting together a care package this week that all of you, uh, fifth grade and under, should be receiving. And so uh, be watching for that towards the end of the week. And then finally, uh, the last announcement this morning is, would you just please uh, keep our missionaries in your prayers, uh, especially uh, our missionary, Rebecca DeWeird. She is actually sitting in the airport in Ethiopia right now. Uh, there have been a number of different changes that have taken place within a week's time for them, and many of their team is leaving Ethiopia right now. Uh, and so she is going to be actually flying to Dublin, Ireland today, and then from there to Chicago, and then to Sioux Falls tomorrow. She'll be uh, in flight or in airports for the next 33 hours. And so if you would just keep Rebecca in your prayers for safety as she travels uh, for health, and then when she does return back here uh, to, to the southwest corner of Minnesota, she will be quarantined for 14 days uh, just for her protection and for those around her. And so would you just be praying for her? We'll give you more details as they come. But we just love Rebecca and uh, are excited to have her back home. And, uh, and so those are the announcements that I, I really want to share with you this morning. Um, our president has once again asked that this would be, uh, today would be a day of prayer. And, uh, and you know what I hope for every one of us as believers that it's a day of prayer. And so uh, this morning I want to start this worship service uh, by just offering ourselves to, to our amazing God and to be praying for the needs and concerns uh, within this church family. Let's pray together uh, this morning. Lord God, we, we love you. Lord God, we thank you that uh, where two or three are gathered together, uh, there you are as well. And so, Lord God, I know that your presence is with each and every one of us this morning. And Lord God, in your presence, Lord God, there's life, there's healing, there's power. Lord God, your word says that if we call on your name, you're quick to answer. That when we pray, when it's according to your will, that you answer swiftly. And so, Lord God, this morning, we, we pray, Lord, for, for our world. Lord God, we pray for all that are affected globally uh, with this virus. Lord God, we pray for those that are in hospital beds this morning. Lord God, we pray for those that, that, that have been infected, that are quarantined at home. Lord God, we pray for those that are, are, are shut in and sheltering and in fear of what might be. Lord God, this morning we ask that your grace would be sufficient for them. 
Lord God, that your Holy Spirit and comfort would meet them right where they're at. Lord God, I pray that in this moment that the uh, church around the world would step up and step out in faith like never before. Lord God, that where faith abounds, fear must flee. And so, Lord God, I pray that in this hour and in this very unique and special time, Lord God, the church would step out in love and in compassion. Lord God, that our eyes and our ears would be attentive more than ever before to the needs of those around us. Lord God, that our ears would hear your voice, that we would see your presence in our midst. Lord God, that you would speak to us and envision signs and wonders. Lord God, that this would be an hour in which we, your people, would see miracles take place. Lord God, that we would simply pray out to you and it would happen as it has been spoken. Lord God, may that be the faith that we engage in during this Lenten season. That would, this would be a, a faith, Lord God, that, 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 that would catch fire to those that are lost and dying within our community and with our world. Lord God, may our communities around us know that they are loved so deeply and dearly because the church steps up in this hour in provision and in comfort and in compassion like never before. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would send angel armies, Lord God, around this globe, Lord God, around our country, to protect our leaders, Lord God, to, uh, Lord, uh, to drop and to kill and to remove this virus right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, just as the cleansing rains and the winds blew last night here in Woodstock, Lord God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come in cleansing and in winds and waves, Lord God, that would remove this virus from our midst. Lord God, may we see your hand move powerfully across this nation. Lord God, we pray for those in our family this morning that are hurting. Lord God, we pray for Mary Vandertop. And Lord God, we pray, Lord, that a quick healing upon that shoulder Lord God, we pray that that physical therapy would go well for her. And Lord God, that as she engages in that, Lord God, that you would keep her exponentially healthy. Lord God, we just pray that you would continue to heal Debbie, Lord God, after her, her major surgery. Lord God, and we thank you for the progress she's made this last week. And God, we ask that that would just continue. We pray, Lord God, for Pastor Carl. Lord God, and we just ask that you would continue to, to bless him and keep him and protect him as he goes to dialysis. Lord God, we also pray that for Marie Veltizen as she goes through uh, dialysis. Lord God, we pray for Sean Patty. Lord God, we pray for Stan and Helen and Jim. Lord God, and those that, that have had diagnoses in the past of cancer. Lord God, we ask that you would bring healing touches to their body. Lord God, we pray uh, for the news that Jim will receive tomorrow. And Lord God, we pray that it would be favorable. Lord God, we pray that if he needs treatment, that there would be one that's highly effective that would be able to heal his body in Jesus' name. Lord God, we also pray for our shut-ins. Lord God, especially this morning, I pray for those that are in our health care, uh, Lord God, system. Lord, our nurses and, and, and those that are involved in activities within nursing homes and hospitals. Lord God, those that are RNs and, and, and CNAs and doctors. Lord God, we pray that you would keep them healthy, Lord God, in the hours that they're working extra. God, give them the energy that they need, Lord God, to persevere. And may they be your hands and feet within this hour. Lord God, be with those teachers as this week they, they begin that long-distance learning. And Lord God, give them creative minds to be able to engage those children. Lord God, I pray for our kids. Lord God, may they know that we're missing them on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings and all the other activities that take place. And, and Lord God, as they might feel a little more confined than normal right now, we ask, Lord God, that there would just be an extra compassion and patience, Lord God, between mom and dad and caretakers and kids, uh, Lord God, that they're homes would be filled with laughter, and Lord God, that we would be able to take advantage of, uh, of these moments of shifting that are happening, Lord God, that we might be able to enter into rest, that we would be able to enter into uh, family connection deeper than ever before, Lord God, that we would draw into your presence like never before, that we'd crack open your word, Lord God, like never before, that it would come alive like never before, and Lord God, we pray these things in faith. And Lord God, in knowledge of knowing that you will hear us and that you will answer. Lord God, we also pray for our city leaders this morning. Lord God, we pray for especially the Woodstock City Council. Lord God, we thank you for them being in the positions that they are. But Lord God, right now we pray for peace 
over them. Lord God, we pray that you would give them wisdom as they lead this community. Lord God, we pray for our mayor. Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you would give him wisdom as well. Lord, we're thankful for Brian. Lord God, we're thankful for every one of those city council members. And Lord God, I pray that in this hour they would be able to hit their knees and Lord God, hear directly from you how they're to lead this community in peace and in unity and in protection. Lord God, may they know that this church family loves them and is praying for them. And so, Lord God, this morning as we are gathered together corporately, uh, many of us online, Lord, we just pray that prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Church family, this morning we are going to worship together. So wherever you're at this morning, maybe you want to stand up, maybe you want to get on your knees, maybe you want to have a, a dance party, wherever you're at, but we are going to worship uh, together in Jesus' name. And so worship team, lead us this morning. Well, Brian mentioned that we're supposed to have worship PJs, so we might have to try that next week. <laughs> When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well. going through that we can say it as well. Father God, that we can speak peace. Father God, we can speak Jesus over this situation. And God, knowing that you are a big God that is powerful, um, and you may answer our prayers differently than we thought, but Father God, we speak Jesus. I 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak I know there is 
is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Father God, we speak Jesus. And the only reason we speak your name, Father God, is you have the power. Father God, you deserve our praise, our honor, and, and glory. And Father God, you inside of us, Father God, make us come alive. You broke every chain and purchased our freedom. song is true, that you would help us see your goodness. Father God, help us see things around us that we can do the good in people, Father God, that we can be Jesus to our neighbors, to our co-workers, um, Father God, maybe even to our kids. <laughs> and um, Father God, that you would just let your light shine in us in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. Amen. Thank you, worship team. I just, but before we get running this morning with the message, and uh, you may be seated. So 
I just had to say, I'm so used to saying that at this point. And so, and I also want to dismiss three through five year olds to nursery. But anyway, uh, so kids, you can, uh, you can go have fun now. And uh, you know what? My prayer is that wherever you're at this morning, that you are coming alive. Church, we have received freedom through the blood of Jesus Christ. You are free in Him today. And so may I remind you in those moments where life might feel a little more inconvenient these days, or you might not be uh, accustomed to having to stay home as much as you have been, or the struggles that you find at work right now, or the wrestling with kids. Can I just tell you, you know what, we are not to live in an atmosphere of grumbling or complaining, but we're to consider it pure joy right now in this hour, church. And so I pray that you will come alive like never before in wherever you're at listening to this message uh, today. Can I just tell you, when you were singing that song this morning, and I just, I'm going to out Pastor Carl in this, all right? And so uh, Pastor Carl right now is, is kind of on a little bit of lockdown because of health uh, reasons, and so he is building a Lego city in his basement, which I think is wicked cool, and I want to come have, have fun. And anyway, he sends me a picture earlier this week of all of these components laying out on a table, and you couldn't tell what they were. And then later on, they're all laying out on the table again, and he put all these little men and women together, and he said, dry bones coming alive. And I thought, hot diggity. That's exactly, may we come alive as a church in this hour. And so may we continue to encourage one another. Let me tell you, it hasn't been easy. I'm the first to admit it. In fact, I'm going to out myself a lot today in the area of confession. But there are moments where it is just not easy. Can I just tell you, that's where we get to rely on one another. We get to call out to one another and go, hey, would you just be praying for me? We get to get on our knees before the Lord and go, I need you to be my source and provision right now. I tell you what, this, we, we, you know, this last several months, we've been talking about what it looks like to hear God's voice. Well, how God speaks, we've talked about 12 different ways in which God speaks and how, and the, and how when uh, we need to, uh, James chapter 4, verse 8, that we need to draw near to him and he will draw near to us. And can I just tell you that as I have been wrestling through some of that this week of drawing near, do you know how uh, Scripture, several different places, I believe it was like over 60 times, says that to hear God, to encounter God, is to get quiet before Him. I don't do well with quiet. I don't do good with stillness. I don't do uh, uh, well with rest. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you're like, I don't do what, maybe, maybe your extroverted self uh, is going a little bit crazy right now. Uh, for most of you, you know that I'm still uh, trying to achieve uh, my master's degree, 14 years in and still going strong. And, uh, and so uh, one, of my, one of my mentors and, and, and one of my faculty uh, advisors actually is sitting here this morning and knows that I'm working on this project uh, for class credit, and it's uh, uh, engaging in spiritual rhythms. That's Al, by the way. The four of you in here are confused. But uh, we're working on this project about what what spiritual disciplines and rhythm look like in our life. And I find it ironic that now, all of a sudden, I have to start exercising some of these a little differently than what I have before. I have no problem with some of those spiritual disciplines, such as fellowship. I love fellowship. Get together with a bunch of people. That's fun. Studying, I love to study. No problem there. Evangelism, heck yeah, let's go. Prayer, love to pray. Gratitude, I feel like I'm a pretty grateful person, and, and I, I have no problem going, Hey, I, I, I'm excited. I'm super upbeat. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you, thank you all the time. Uh, celebration, yeah. Woo! Celebration. That's that's pretty easy discipline. Uh, simplicity. I'd like to think that in some ways I live a simplistic life. Don't you laugh at me, Melody? I, it's, I, I, hey. I have half the tools I used to have, so simplicity. All right, and, and, and worship, I love to worship, and, and confession. Hey, I'm going to confess this morning. I, I don't have a problem confessing. Submission, uh, I submit to my wife as often as I need to. Um, giving, uh, I mean, I love to give. However, and even fasting, I know it might not show it, I won't stand sideways, so you can, but you know, giving up a meal here or there, or even for a couple days, not such a hard discipline. However, the spiritual discipline of solitude and silence and rest, man, I struggle at those. 
And yet, church, I feel like it might just be in this hour, in this time, that God is calling us into that exact thing. I know he's been challenging me all week long, and I've been struggling with that. Uh, you know, I lost my voice for, uh, two weeks ago for almost, uh, you know, four days, three to four days, where I couldn't even utter a noise. And I think it was all in preparation for me personally to know, to hear his voice even more clearly in this hour. Church, we need to hear him. We need to draw. This is an opportunity for us to put into practice, myself included. I'm on the front line of that. To draw closer to him and hear him and to quiet ourselves more than ever before. A few verses this week that I've been wrestling through, and I want to just ch challenge you maybe with this, and, 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 and there are many that are familiar, but just as a reminder, Psalms uh, chapter uh, 46, verse 10, oh, that verse, be still and know that I am God. Oh, we love to quote it for everybody else until it comes to us. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. I pray that right now as the church has an opportunity to maybe rest like never before, to get before His feet like never before, to humble ourselves like never before, that we would be still and know that He is God and see Him exalted uh, not only in our nation, not only in our community, not only in our church, but globally, that the church would arise and that we would see him on full display psalm 27 verse 14 says also wait for the lord oh that wait word wait for the lord be strong and let your heart take courage wait for the lord maybe it is in this moment of rest and in a quiet and maybe even a little bit of solitude that our hearts will take courage for what the battle looks like to come that we would be empowered and readied for what revival will look like when this hour has passed maybe we are to, to be gathering strength right now Psalm 37, verse 7, again, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Worry not yourself over the one who prospers in His way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Listen, we're not to worry in this hour. Evil is rampant, yes, but God is good and He's on His throne and He's given us the weaponry in order to defeat Him. Church, I want to encourage you in this hour, declare healing and health over your house. Declare healing and health over your community. Declare healing and health over your jobs and your employers You have and employees. You have been given that power in this hour to do that. We don't need to worry about what's to come. We get to be still and wait patiently and watch Him go to work. And the incredible thing is that our God, the God of the universe, wants to partner with us. Holy smokes. That's amazing. He didn't need to, but He wants to. And He wants to partner with us. That's where our faith needs to arise Psalm 60, 62, verses 5 and 6. For God alone, O oh my soul, waits in silent, for my hope is from you. Where are you getting hope from this morning, church? Guess what? You're not going to find it on Netflix. You're not going to find it on Amazon Prime or Hulu or on cable network TV. You're not going to find it on Facebook or, or social media. Our hope comes from God alone. Let me tell you, if you go to the end of the day and you find yourself depleted, exhausted, and weary, can I ask you how many times have you drawn near to God in that particular day? Maybe you need to get before Him and silence and focus your hope on him he's got it he's got it going on in verse 6 he says he alone only is my rock and my salvation my fortress i shall not be shaken guess what church in this hour it is impossible for us to be shaken if we put our hope and our trust and our faith in him he will be our solid rock in the midst of what the world wants to say is chaos the title of the message today is finding peace in the midst of chaos well guess what the church should not be chaotic in this hour it should be ready and waiting for whatever it is that he has in store for 
us. We are a people that should exemplify peace and not grumbling. Listen, we, do, we need to uh, administer uh, love like never before to our neighbors and to show and demonstrate to our families, to our children, that this is an hour in which God is very present. Families, show your kids, moms and dads, show your kids what it looks like to live the faith-filled life, what that freedom looks like to be in that faith-filled life. You can do it. We can do it together. Exodus 14, 14. It's one of my favorites, so I had to throw it in there. But the Lord will fight for you, but all you have to do is be silent. In the midst of battle, in the midst of struggle, this is what the Lord instructed of Moses. The Lord will fight for you. All you have to do is be silent. If you're looking for that battle strategy, you're looking for where God wants to lead you, guide you, take you, Maybe you need to be silent so he can fight that battle for you. How many of us, myself included, I'm, I'm the worst at this. I want to do it on my own. I got this. I've got it all taken care of. I'll fight that battle. And then we end up bloodied and bruised and beaten and discouraged and downtrodden and whatever other words you want to rode over, backed over, thrown to the side, whatever that looks like. And, and how many of us want to try to do it on our own and then when we finally get to that point of desperation, then we cry out to God. What would it look like in this hour to cry out to God before? What would it look like to go, God, prepare us. God, go ahead of us. Fight that battle. We already know your word has told us that you have already won the battle. A verse that, that I sent out this morning to the church is a, is a form of devotion. It's one I've been wrestling with and, and, and one I've been struggling with because I don't rest well. I'm a doer. And so the fact that I don't get to visit with you face-to-face -face this morning and throughout the week, I don't get to do hospital visits or nursing home visits. I don't get to stop out at your farm like I used to. I don't have that free. They, they, those are hard things. And I know many of you are encountering those very same things as well. But here's what Isaiah said to the children of God. For this is what the Lord said, the Holy One of Israel in returning and in rest, you shall be saved. In returning and in rest. And in quietness and in trust shall be your strength. But you were unwilling. You see, the children of God had turned their back on, uh, the, the children of God had turned their backs on God. They were going down their own path. They were living life according to their desires and, and, and worshiping according to what they wanted. And God took the back burner in their lives and, and God was calling them into account. Let, let me tell you, church, God will call us into account when we are not putting Him first and foremost in our lives. And Isaiah the prophet came to the children of God and said, hey, listen, God is calling you back. Return to Him. Return back. Get on your knees before Him. Find rest in Him and you will be saved in quietness and in trust shall be your strength. You see, the children of God had not trusted in Him. They had trusted in their ways and in their economy and in their health system and in their ways of doing life and instead of what God had said. And then that final part of that verse just strikes me, but you were unwilling. And then what happens to the nation of Israel, the children of God after that is they are exiled they are made slaves because of their disobedience, because they did not rest and return to God. Maybe, just maybe, that's exactly where we're supposed to be right now, resting and returning in preparation for what is to come. In this hour, we need to hear His voice, like I said last week several times, we need to hear His voice we need to draw close to Him so that we may hear His battle strategy for His for his community, for our community, that we can know how to reach our brothers and sisters in love, that we can exemplify the power that's found in the Holy Spirit in this very special time. What is he saying right now? John 10, 14 says that Jesus is the good shepherd, and Jesus says, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, and they hear my voice. Church, if we are his children, if we are his sheep, May we hear His voice. Are you asking those questions that I challenged you with last week and, and questions that I've been asking for the last almost two years of God? God, what are you doing? Where are you going? And how can we be a part of it? 
May that be our mantra and our cry right now. And, and I'm going to finish out today the sermon series that we started, I don't know, at the beginning of the year somewhere, and talking about the different ways in which God speaks. And in the remaining moments that we have together, there are the three remaining of the 12 that I lined out, but there are many more than that. The number 10, if you still have your notes, and I'll post them later online for you, um, the notes that have been handed out week after week, I'll post them online, but the number 10 on there is that how, how does God speak to us? One of the ways in which God speaks to us is through what some of us call fleeces. The Bible, many Christians say, well, I, I'm going to lay down my fleece, but I have found over the years that many believers, uh, new believers in particular, have no idea what that means. You're going to lay a lamb down? Uh, I, well, what are you talking about, Pastor? No, uh, really, you can also translate that fleeces, how God speaks through not only fleeces, but signs showing himself through signs. That, that word fleeces comes from uh, Judges chapter 6 where there's a man by the name of Gideon. Oh, Gideon, what a powerful... I'm someday going to preach on Gideon. Gideon is, is, is one of my favorite judges uh, because he looks a lot like me. And you know and how he comes to the Lord and how he encounters the Lord and in moments where he is absolutely on mountain highs, where he's hearing God's voice very clearly and then in those moments where he's doubting what he's heard. And, and in this particular situation, uh, God has clearly spoken in many different ways to Gideon about what the battle plan looked like for him, how he was to go and, and, and gather men together and go attack the enemy, to go attack the Philistines. And he lined out this incredible battle plan, but yet Gideon lived in fear, not faith, but in fear. And so he called upon God in his weakness and his doubt, and he said, God, would you show me, just affirm to me what this looks like, what I'm supposed to do in this time. And so Gideon takes a large fleece, lays it down on the ground and says, hey, God, if I am to go the way that you, I believe you're calling me to, would you please allow during the night for there to be a dew that settles in on this fleece, but nowhere else, that the ground around it, everything would be dry except for that fleece. And he wakes up the next morning and he wrings out that fleece in a bowl. The Bible says in, in, in Judges chapter 6 that, that a bowl full of water he was able to wring out. And yet that still wasn't enough for him. And so then Gideon then goes, okay, Lord, that could have maybe happened by accident. Let's, let's try this one more time. I'm going to lay that fleece out. And now, God, I want it to be dry in the morning and the rest of the ground to be soaked in dew. And so he wakes up the next morning and the fleece is dry and the ground is soaked with dew. And that's where kind of the, the, this principle, if you will, uh, of the fleeces come out where when we are the children of God crying out, maybe sometimes in our lack and in our wanting to hear the voice of God and to affirm that, that we are in His will, that we are given permission in order to ask Him to show us if we're on the right path. Now this can be uh, taken sorely out of context and this can be abused and so I would caution you in that. There are, there are times where I've had people go, you know what, I have two options for jobs before me and I've laid out my fleece. If I get a phone call uh, from, from, my, from this one job by 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, then I know that's the job that I'm supposed to take. I don't think it works quite like that. Or, or you know what, if the sun comes up tomorrow morning, then I'll do that. Well, you know, chances are uh, within the, the realms of nature, the sun's going to come up. That's not how this is supposed to work. It is, is when we humble ourselves and we go, God, would you just show us in only a way that you know how to affirm, to speak to our soul that this is exactly the plan that you have for us. And I, I, I asked Rebecca if I, uh, I, I asked Rebecca if I could uh, use her as an example today. Because for over a week, she's been wrestling and crying out to God uh, of what it looks like. She, she is so uh, connected and, and loves the mission field that she's been called to in Ethiopia, and, and yet wondering, since the State Department has called her home, whether she should stay or, or, or whether she should come home. And she was wrestling with that, the elders, and, and so got together and talked with her and prayed with her over what that would look like. And, and then she asked God this week in order to show her in a sign to affirm, to speak to her so clearly of what that decision should make. And she, she was able to testify that in two very specific incidences and only ways that God could have showed her that she would know, he made it very clear in those signs. I believe that's what, what I would call putting out your fleece. 
I know Melody and I have, have done this before and, and asking God, we want you to make it undeniable. We want you, Lord God, to speak so very clearly that we would never be able to deny the fact that you wanted us in this place and this time. We had the fleece-type moment in coming to Woodstock and choosing between here and, and another place. Praise God that he spoke so clearly in that moment. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. This past week, in an area of even finance and giving, I felt like God had said, hey, I want you to give uh, this, th- this particular gift in this way. And, and, and I was like, is that me or is that of God? And, and so I said, God, if, if this is truly what you are asking of me, uh, Melody and I need to come into agreement with that. I want you to lay it on Melody's heart as well. And that was my fleece of going, God, if you lay it on her heart that way, then I, this is, and within a few hours, Melody comes to me and says, hey, I have this on my heart and mind to give in this particular way. And it was affirming undeniably that that is exactly what God wanted. That's how God wants to speak to us, to affirm us undeniably that he is at work. And sometimes there are major decisions in our lives where we need to hear him clearly. And so this is one of those ways in which we can hear him and see him at work. Another part of that fleeces or signs uh, that the, the New Testament lays out as well as the Old Testament, I believe would fit in this category, is that of casting lots. And in Acts chapter 1, and you could turn there uh, with me this morning, in Acts chapter 1, verse 26. Acts chapter 1, verse 26 Jesus has ascended into heaven and now the apostles are waiting for what is to come and what the vision is to look like. They know that they've been given a mission, that they're supposed to go forth and to spread the gospel. And here they have a decision to make, however, that there were once 12 of them, but because Judas has taken his life and has betrayed them, they need to choose one more within their rankings And so they look amongst the 72 followers that had been with Jesus, the Bible says, from his baptism until his death. Those that had engaged with him in intimate ministry, that knew his principles and knew who he was and how he operated and that he was truly the Son of God. And so they chose amongst them two from those 72, and they chose Matthias and Justice And yet this decision was not one in which they wanted to make. They wanted God himself to make it. And so they did something what's called casting of lots or what we would maybe refer to of a rolling of the dice or a drawing of the straws. And they cast lots so that the Lord would choose. And so in verse 26, and then they cast lots and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to the eleven apostles. Over 88 times in the Old Testament alone, we see that there's a casting of lots. Maybe you remember, boys and girls, maybe you remember uh, the story of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1 verse 7 where Jonah uh, denies the call of God and he gets on the ship and and now the waves are are crashing over and a storm like's never been seen before happens and and even these sailors are afraid and they're throwing things overboard and they've done everything they can and they realize that this storm being centered on them has to be uh, because of something that somebody had done on that ship. And so in order to figure out who that person was, they did what was called in Jonah chapter 1 verse 7, a a casting of lots or a drawing of straws. And guess who drew the short straw? It was Jonah. It was Jonah. And Jonah then confesses at that point that yes, he was running from God and what he needed to do was to be thrown overboard. There's an example of that. Uh, Joshua chapter 18, as, as the children of God crossed over into the promised land and, and they fought many battles and, and now the elders had, had d- divided up the land, the promised land that they had been waiting for for hundreds of years and they divided it into 12 different parcels and then it says in Joshua chapter 18, then they divided it amongst which tribe would land in which area and which family would take which piece of land. That wasn't a drawing of straws or a cast of lots. Nehemiah chapter 10 is very much the same way of, of how Nehemiah divided up the duties of the temple in order to provide uh, the supplies that were needed. Nehemiah chapter 10, there was a drawing of straws, a casting of lots. Here in Proverbs chapter 16, 33, the lot is cast into the lap, but its very decision is from the Lord. 
Proverbs chapter 18, 18 also says that casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. Now, a word of caution in this, this is not uh, condoning gambling. <laughs> Some think, oh, you know what, I'll go to the casino and just earn back my entire month's wages and, and if it's of God, I'm going to win big. No, that's not of the Lord. This is very different. This is where there are decisions to be made and they're God-sized decisions and that there are moments where God can speak very clearly through fleeces, casting of lots, and asking Him to show Himself in signs. Another place in, in, in which we can hear God speak into our lives in this season. And, and just a reminder that, that the primary way in which we hear God speak is in His Holy Word. That is foundational 100%. And any of the other 11 that we've talked about, or any others in the Bible which you see, need to be based on Scripture and on His Word. And they need to be gauged through His Word and that in this hour, just a reminder how Paul says to us, don't despise prophecies or words or ways in which God speaks, but test everything according to His Word, holding fast to what, what, what is good and abstaining from every form of evil. And just a reminder that Acts uh, chapter 17, verse 11 says, just because Pastor Brian said it doesn't mean it true. Go test it for yourself in the Word of God. Now, it doesn't literally say Pastor Brian in there. That'd be pretty cool. But it does say that when, when, when those were listening to the words of Paul, those Bereans tested the Word by all week long, going back and measuring every word he had spoken against the Scripture, the very Word of God. That's what we're to do. There are moments where pastors get it very wrong, and I hope that that's not me, but there might be times where, where I say something or trip up on something or it's bad theology. This is where you need to know the Word of God for yourself. Another way in which he speaks, and, and the 11th one on that list, is that God wants to speak through dreams, visions, and trances. Yes, this is a very real thing that still happens today. God wants to speak in those ways. And, and sometimes I find that people have a very active dream life and, and, and they know that it means something, but they can't figure out what. Can I just tell you, if that's you, ask God to reveal to you what that dream means. Ask Him to show you very clearly because he, dreams are a way in which God can speak to you in which the enemy can't understand. God loves to speak in pictures, signs, symbols, and wonders, and, and, and some of those happen within our dream lives. And I know that there, within this church are many people who have very active dream lives and that when they understand what their dreams mean, it speaks specifically to the season in which they are in. This is very real and applicable for today. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. In the New Testament, right here, and the, the apostles that are gathered together quote this scripture, and they say, in the last days, guess what, church we are in the last days god says i will pour out my spirit on all people oh let me tell you if you are not filled with the holy spirit here is the verse right here that tells you you can be infilled with the power of the holy spirit just ask he says i will pour out my holy spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions hallelujah and your old men will dream dreams even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Oh, I pray that right now the Holy Spirit is speaking to us as a church in visions, signs, and wonders in a way. And then in the last days, those are supposed to follow us wherever we go. That power of the Holy Spirit that's been afforded to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that gift that's been imparted to us as the believer in the Holy Spirit needs to be enacted now more than ever. Call upon the Holy Spirit to move with inside of you. And guess what? He will be faithful to do so. I love how in Job chapter 33, if you want to turn in your Bibles to Job chapter 33, even out of the Old Testament in a time of crisis, in a time where Job is crying out to God and wondering what's taking place, these very words out of Job chapter 33, verse 14 and following, where his friend says, for God does speak, hallelujah, God speaks. 
Now one way and then another. Can I just tell you that God speaks in a, a myriad of different ways in our lives. We could get very accustomed to how he speaks in one way and then all of a sudden he wants to change it up a little bit. That's his prerogative and his creative way in which he can do it. I believe that's why sometimes when we're studying God's Word, sometimes it doesn't come alive to us like it did before, and that's because God's trying to speak to us through that Word, maybe in a different expression. Maybe you're finding that your time in quiet with the Lord looks uh, a little dry. Maybe ask Him to show you how He's speaking in a different season right now, where He's training you, informing you. Church, He's training us right now to hear Him in all different ways. For God speaks now one way and then another, and, and, and though no one perceives it, verse 15, in dreams and in visions in the night, when deep sleep falls on people and as they slumber in their beds, He speaks in their ears. The, and terrify them with warnings to turn them from wrongdoing and to keep them from pride. A lot of folks that we encounter that have very active dream lives, it is a warning that God speaks in there. And here's the scripture. Numbers uh, chapter 12 verse 6 talks very clearly uh, about this as well. Numbers chapter 12 verse 6, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions and I speak to them in dreams. Guess what? In, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, Jesus says that we are prophets, priests, and kings. That means he speaks to you and wants to speak to you in dreams and visions. One of the most incredible encounters uh, uh, of a trance is in Acts chapter 10, verse 10. And you can study that in your own time. Uh, my time is running short. But Peter is up on the roof, and God is calling him into an incredible ministry, and it says that he fall, fell into a trance. A trance is a lot like a daydream. And I know that there are, or a deja vu moment where you're like, hey, I've been here before, or, or you have that daydream that you, you are just, uh, you're seeing things and yet you're very present in that moment. Peter was having that before God called him to go and meet with Gentiles. Number 12 in the way that he speaks, and it's, it's probably one of my favorite and also one in which we need to be very cautious of, that God speaks to us through others. How many of us haven't had that encounter? I believe that when God speaks to us through others, I believe that's where the church shines the best. I mean, where is it where we come? And a few weeks ago, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26 talked very much about how we are to come with a song and with a word and an exaltation that we might build one another up. I believe we're to ask God to give us those things to encourage each other. That's how God wants to speak through us to others. Have you ever had it where you're struggling or wrestling with something in your life and all of a sudden you have, strike up a conversation with somebody or someone calls you out of the blue and go, hey, you've been on my heart today and God, when I'm praying for you, my sense is, is A, B, C, and D and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. That's exactly what I'm dealing with in that moment. That's God using somebody in your life to speak. One of those examples and a really amazing example of this in Scripture is where Moses has brought out over two million people into the wilderness. They're, they're, they are are seated at the, uh, the, the Mount Sinai, and, and, uh, and, and now all of a sudden, father-in-law Jethro comes to visit. It's always scary when your father-in-law comes to visit, and so Moses is showing him around, and, and he says, uh, we'll see if my father-in-law is listening this morning, and, and he says, let me show you around, and he takes him to the, to the court, and Moses sits himself on the seat, and he begins uh, exacting judgments and hearing all sorts of complaints and issues in which these people had had, and, and Jethro uh, says to him, uh, uh, and I'm trying to remember, I thought I had the scripture lined out here, but it's in Exodus, Exodus chapter 18, I believe it is, um, and, and Jethro looks at him, Jethro looks at him and, and goes, this is not healthy, Moses. You cannot be doing this on your own. And then Jethro, uh, I believe speaking the words of the Lord to him, says, this is the way in which you can outline this to, have, uh, to carry this heavy load that you shouldn't be shouldering on your own. And then Moses enacts that and separates out the people and, uh, and, and, and appoints judges. I believe that's one incredible example of how God speaks through others. We also see the prophets throughout Scripture. Samuel, we've talked about Samuel a great deal, but he talked several times to, to Saul 
about what God was, was laying on his heart and how Saul needed to act and even how Saul fell. Uh, Nathan, out of Samuel chapter 12, uh, when Nathan comes to David and says, David, you have done a, a horrific thing. God uses the voices of people in order to speak his truth. We see in Acts chapter 9 where uh, Ananias is called to go to Paul and help Paul through uh, to understand the encounter in which uh, he has just had with the Lord and that he is called to go and speak the good news to the Gentiles. Excuse me, that's for Peter, but where Paul is called. Church, I believe that God wants to speak through us in this hour and, and, and in closing this morning, from the words of Jesus out of Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. Out of Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. Where Jesus says, In those last days, for it will not be you who speaks, but the Spirit of your Father that speaks through you. And the context in which Jesus is speaking is that he has released the 72 in pairs of two to go out and declare the good news, to bring healings and signs and wonders. And yet Jesus says in that hour, it won't be you who's speaking. It'll be the Father speaking through you. I pray that God gives you ample opportunity this week to speak to others on his behalf to declare the good news, to bring hope and encouragement and strength to those around you. I pray that you would be attentive, church family, like never before. That he would wake you up with even names of people to be praying for, to calling, to encouraging. Let me tell you, church, if you have people dropping on your heart during the day, don't, don't hesitate to act on that prompting. Act on it right now and see what God will do through it. I guarantee there's a miracle in the wait for you. So Lord Jesus, this morning, I pray for this church family. Lord God, I thank you for the love that they have for one another and that the love that they have for you, more importantly, and the love that they have for this community. Lord God, may you bless them. May you keep them. May your face shine upon them and bring them peace. Now until we meet again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church family, just a reminder this morning, don't log off quite yet. Just a reminder that there is an opportunity uh, to be able to continue to give. Listen, just because the church isn't meeting uh, under the roof uh, of a building doesn't mean that the ministries of this church aren't still going out and that there aren't missionaries and, and ministries that need uh, support during this time. And so I want to encourage you on the website, there is an opportunity on every page to click the Give Now button. You can give online. There's a big uh, button also or a big picture or graphic on the homepage, you could click there. Um, also, you can mail in your gifts uh, to P.O. Box 68 here in Woodstock, uh, and that is 56186 is the zip code. It's also found on the website. You can also stop them by the church, and uh, I promise you, uh, as of always, those gifts are going to be used to further the gospel message of Jesus Christ, not only here in Woodstock, but around uh, the world. And so I pray that you have a great week. We cannot wait to see you all again soon. God bless you. Hallelujah.